Hey guys, so today we're going to jump into another top 10 units in Dragon Ball Legends video. This is going to be the October 2023 edition. Uh, so if you're watching this at a later point in time, just keep that in mind. Uh, before we jump in, I always like to give three points. Number one, all characters are considered at 14 stars, best teams, best equips, max title boosts, best possible situations, etc. Uh, number two, this is going to be a top 10 best characters in the current meta not simply a who's the best characters in the game ranked individually in a vacuum list so uh this can change down the line the spots are pretty fluid we'll see variations of this list uh in two weeks from now when the next banner comes out so uh all the characters on this list all the spots on this list are pretty fluid so keep that in mind uh then number three this list consists of rankings that are entirely of my own opinion it's just my own thoughts how i feel about the game i experience the game different from a lot of you guys you guys have probably played and, and fight against different characters than me a lot of the time. So this is my own personal list based off my experience. Um, and with that being said, I'm going to go a little bit faster through this one. Um, I feel like these videos have gone on for way too long in the past. Uh, now, in this one in particular, I actually am going to do an honorable mentions list. I have six honorable mention characters. going to quickly sweep through those, and then we'll jump into the top ten. So let's go ahead and start with the honorable mentions, and then we'll jump into the top ten list from there. All right, so here's my honorable mention list. We have LF Path to Power Kid Goku. We have Ultra Rose Goku Black. We have Ultra Hit. Uh, we have Magenta, and then we have Rebel Goku, and then finally Blue Zamasu. I'll start from the top, and we'll make our way down. I'm just going to go pretty fast through this. Uh, Path to Power Kid Goku, I don't know how to evaluate this character. It's very, very tough. This is probably one of the single hardest to evaluate characters in the history of this game. Uh, a lot of what he's doing is dependent upon how many Dragon Balls you're drawing. This character can have a string of luck where you draw seven Dragon Balls in the first five counts, and he rushes the opponent, and you just get rid of somebody really fast, and you win the game instantly. Or you can go 40, 50, 60 counts in a row without getting a single Dragon Ball. He doesn't get cover null, he doesn't get key back, he doesn't get damage, and he sucks. Right? I mean, there's just so much variation in his performance. Uh, on top of the fact that I feel like the Dragon Ball Saga celebration was very, very bad, and they dropped the ball hard with that, and the team doesn't have, uh, you know, reliable characters that are able to stand up to the likes of, like, Endurance Nullifying Rising Rushes and stuff like that. That's pretty common in the meta right now. Well, less common than it was two weeks ago, but... Yeah, it's still pretty common, so I, I don't know. It's tough to evaluate this character. I feel like you're not really going to be running him on movies. You can, but I, I think you're not probably going to do that. So um, right now he's honorable mentions. This character, I mean, again, hardest to evaluate character in the game right now. That's at least a meta relevant character, in my opinion. You, you could probably put him as high as like six if you wanted to at his like peak performance level. But I don't know. I have him here for now. We'll see what happens uh, later on down the road. Ultra Rosé. This guy's aged out. He's kind of... Uh, I don't want to call him a bum, but uh, he definitely is not as good as he used to be. He just, just, just gets crushed by Janemba. I mean, he's, he's a green character that gets crushed by a blue character, and then obviously Goku and Frieza still kill him easily. The Gamma's kill him easily. All, like, Cell destroys his character, so it's tough. Uh, Rosé, I mean, you can sit in the back and just toss a bunch of blues out, and hopefully you catch somebody in a sidestep, and maybe you catch Janemba with a blue card, and you win the game once every 20 matches with him, and he could be pretty good there, but... In a consistent setting where this guy needs to sit there and build up and attack and attack and attack in the meta that's the fastest meta we've seen in a long time it's just not his uh, environment here ultra hit i feel like actually has gained a little bit of value since the last time i did a list potentially now obviously the best character in the game is blue spoiler alert janemba's one it's not close he gaps every character in the game by far um uh, this guy can actually be pretty good because the way that janemba has impacted this game is that he basically has eliminated the concept of long combos from existing and Hit does not need to do long combos to be able to kill people. So I feel like he actually has gotten some value. But of course, blue character, best in the game right now. So <laughs> it's tough to run him. It is. Uh, Magenta has gotten some value, of course. Uh, him being an include on the Android team, I think, has actually been pretty decent for a lot of uh, people. I've ran into a lot of Magenta Android teams. So him being on this honorable mention list, I think, makes sense. If he, get, if he dies early and, let's say, like, Janemba kills him early with, a, with an ult or something like that. The cell max AoE damage is really impactful, so he's pretty good. Dragon Ball Destruction is nice as well. Revival Goku. Um, I feel like you actually could maybe push Goku up to like maybe 10 on the list, but I, I don't see it. I think he's just a little bit too weak at this point. His He gets pretty strong with his uh, transform form post revival with the long range blue card that can decimate Janemba. But again, it's one of those things where it's like you're just going to sit in the back and just pray that you, that you catch the enemy in a sidestep with your blue card. Like you're not just going to hit Janemba with the blue card unless the opponent's like just sidestepping constantly and you could just catch them with it. It's just not really going to happen that often. 
Uh, but he's pretty good. I mean, nothing crazy. Um, and then I threw some also on here. I mean, he's honestly not that great. The only reason why I even put him on here is just because he's like one of the only characters in the game, if not just the single only character in the game that can even tank like full combos from characters right now. Uh, obviously, he can't live like, you know, Vegeta Blue Rushes or Gogeta Blue Rushes and stuff like that. But, you know, he, he can live and, and tank pretty well um, Janemba Ultimates from the counter. So I put him on here. I don't think he's that great, though, but uh, I felt like it was worth mentioning him. So. Let's go ahead and jump into number 10 on the list and we'll move through this rather briskly. Number 10, we have Captain Ginyu. Uh, I'm a little bit torn on where to place this guy right now. I think revives are extremely valuable just because, again, there's no character in the game that can really actually tank right now. So having a revive basically acts as like one of the only ways you can actually survive by getting hit by like raw ultimates and stuff like that. Uh, Captain Ginyu is just like, I. what team are you running him on? The Ginyu Force is okay. I mean, they're, they're not as good as they were in release because Rakum and Goldo can't tank. I mean, Janema just dumpsters on them like every character in the game. I don't really know what they're going to do moving forward. Like, are they going to start giving characters 80% reduced damage received? Or like, what's, what's going to happen? Even like the Ginyu Force, I fought a full 14 star Ginyu Force team, a full Z plus the whole works. 14 star Rakum and Goldo, Zenkai buffed by the green Namek uh, Ka Kaioken Goku from Janemba's raw ult through their 80% um, what uh, ultimate arts power down. He did half his HP. It was just gone. Boom. Instantly, instantly gone. He gets uh, extreme bleed afflicted and then he just goes to like a third HP and then Janemba just like hits him once and he's dead. So it's tough to put Ginyu on there. Um, Again, you can work well, of course, still with like Goku and Frieza on, on their teams, but they also get crushed. So I don't know. I feel like Ginyu, you maybe could put him like a slot or two higher than this, but I feel comfortable with him at 10. I feel like he's not really made any significant leaps and bounds up and he's not really fallen off super hard either. So I feel OK with him being at 10. So let's move on to number nine. All right, next we have Kid Buu. Uh, I'd say this character has gotten significantly better with Janemba coming out. Obviously, Regen has now obtained their uh, behemoth character, and he is blue, which definitely covers Kid Buu's weakness to uh, red characters. Obviously, up until this point, Kid Buu has been extremely terrified of Ultra Vegeta Blue, but now with Janemba on the team, doesn't really have to be as scared here. The main problem with for this character is that he doesn't make the core of the team. I think you can run a core of, like, Kid Buu, Janemba, and Orange Piccolo. Again, Orange Piccolo is mandatory to run because you have to run a green character, and he's the only one available on Regen right now. Um, but I'd rather just run Cell over Kid Buu. And so the core of my team becomes Cell, uh, Piccolo, and then Janemba. But I mean, this guy works well in the team still, but um, he does take a lot of damage from Janemba. Like, uh, again, no one can tank Janemba, but when you're going up against type neutral against Janemba with like this Kid Buu, yeah, he has endurance, but uh, can he really even tank like one ult from Janemba is, is the, the question, I guess, right? I mean, he has some perks, right? He gets his Vanish back with his blue card. His green card is really goddamn good. Um, the problem, though, is when this guy is fighting other Janembas, his <laughs> his green card turns his whole hand into strikes, and then you're just kind of just not able to do anything. And then, of course, even if you use your blue card, he has a melee blue card. So it becomes a little tough for this guy, but I feel like he's still able to do well. And, of course, uh, with Janemba able to cover his weakness to Vegito, he's definitely a lot better than he was prior to the Janemba's release. So, Kid Buu at number 9. Let's move on to number 8. Alrighty, number 8. We have Orange Piccolo. Um, this is a character that I could talk at, at supreme length about. <laughs> uh, where do I start with this guy? So, I mean... He's at number eight. That's, I think, is that the highest he's ever been on a list that I've made? I think it might be. Besides, like, when he first came out. Like, I, was he even number eight on the first list I made from him? He, he was he was right around number eight, nine, somewhere in there. Uh, but obviously, now that uh, the best character in the game by far is blue, you need to run a green. And I think more so than anything else, right? This is a... I've been saying the same thing about Orange Piccolo since he's come out. He's not bad. He's not terrible. He's not any of those adjectives. He's good, but he's not as good as he should have been. And I think, um, you know, since it's been a good four months since he's released, we have gotten a decent amount of power creep since then. Um, and I, I would say that his placement at number eight on here is not representative of how good he is as a character. It's more such the fact that we don't have a single good green in the game. Like there, there literally are no good green units in the entire game right now. So I would just say that that's the reason why Piccolo is this high up. He actually does a pretty good job of uh, being a two-way character, um, you know, in terms of being able to support Janemba on the defensive end, uh, you know, the, the the disruption, the um, the arts power down, the card draw speed down. 
the healing as well, the support for Janemba. And then, yeah, I just mentioned the, the support is the offensive way that he supports Janemba. So uh, he's a good two way support character for regen. Of course, uh, there are a lot of blue characters flying around. Of course, Janemba is the most prominent one. His ability to be able to defend against enemy Janembas is the most important one. Um, Orange Piccolo definitely takes a lot of damage from Janemba. Again, no one in the game can tank against Janemba. But this is the best we got right now for regen, so this is what we'll have to uh, use here. Orange Piccolo at number 8. Uh, it would be it'd be nice if we actually got gr good green units in this game, huh? Alright, number 7, we have Ultra Vegito Blue. Uh, obviously, we were going to see a uh, decline for this character after Ultra Janemba released. People, I've seen people, a lot of people acting as if like this guy's like all of a sudden unusable now, which is certainly not the case. I mean, this is one of the most ridiculous characters they've ever released in the history of this game. We have gotten a lot of counters to this character, right? Namek Goku, Trunks. But the thing with this Janemba release is, yes, Janemba is pretty bad for this guy. But guess who else Janemba is pretty bad for? The characters that previously countered this guy. <laughs> Janemba obliterates Namek Goku. Janemba obliterates Trunks. Like, you honestly almost can't even use Trunks. Trunks is dead in the water right now. That's Zenkai's sort of up Trunks. He, he just, his whole entire mechanic of his gauge reducing the enemy's key by 100 to basically guarantee that you stop the enemy's combo once. Janemba doesn't care. He doesn't care about key reduction, so he just dies and he's useless. So, uh, no more sort of up Trunks. We have a, def a swift decline in the amount of Namek Gokus that we've seen, that I've seen at least. Um, and then Goku and Frieza as well just get curb stomped by Janemba. So I feel like this Vegito Blue, yes, he's definitely been negative, negatively impacted overall by Janemba's release because Janemba just utterly destroys him with no question at all. Um, but in other ways, I think, um, you know, Namek Goku's play has definitely gone down. We've seen less play with uh, Sword of Hope Trunks. Goku and Frieza are still pretty ubiquitous, but they're not as, you know, every single match you're running into them. I. I I think Regen is easily the team I've run into the most so far this season with Janemba, and I've already done my God Rank grind by the time I'm recording this video. Um, I am top like 180 or something like that, so I have played a decent bit this season with Janemba. But um, yeah, people are acting like Vegito Blue is just all of a sudden unusable, which is definitely not the case. This character is still ridiculously busted, and um, even like if you get rid of Janemba's first gauge, like Vegito can do some work. He, he definitely can, but. It's, it's it's a lot tougher for him now than it used to be. So that's why he's at seven here. Still think he's pretty good. So let's move on to number six. All right, number six, we have LF Namek Goku. Uh, definitely a bit of a decline for this character here. I would actually say that number six and number five are probably interchangeable on this list. Uh, we'll talk about number five after this, but Namek Goku, uh, the problem with how he got impacted by Janemba is number one, a lot of what this guy wants to do and a lot of his value is coming from the key reduction early on. I mean, that, that's his like entire defensive ability is being able to reduce the enemy key by 20 whenever he's hit. Uh, Janemba literally does not care about that at all. And then the other thing about this character, which we'll talk about more in depth once we get to Goku and Frieza, is the fact that this guy's entire gimmick, and this also goes, um, this also sort of plays into Vegito as well. Um, is the fact that this guy's entire playstyle is being able to chain together very, 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 very long combos, specifically green cards, right? This guy guaranteed draws a green card to extend his combos and then to continue to draw more cards and gain cover null. Guess what Janemba doesn't care about? Melee-based green cards, and he doesn't care about cover null, and he doesn't care about key reduction. This guy, Janemba basically nullifies his character's kit. Like, it's just... Uh... <laughs> I don't know. Um, now, that's not to say this Goku can't actually perform well against Janemba because he does have the single most broken mechanic in the game, probably still, which is the lock-in, uh, the no-switching mechanic. So if you catch Janemba with a blast from somebody, or even this character, you can just swiftly lock him in with this guy and kill him. Right? It's, it's definitely possible, right? Because Janemba can't counter ultimates. So this Namek Goku is still pretty good, I think, and obviously against characters that aren't named Ultra Super Janemba, he's able to do pretty well against. Uh, Orange Piccolo can be a pretty big issue for this guy because Orange Piccolo uh, with the minus two card draw speed can really hamper how fast this guy is able to chain together his uh, uh, his, his gauge buildups, right? But other than that, I feel like he's actually still pretty good. I don't think he was, like, you know, made irrelevant because of Janemba, but he certainly was pretty negatively impacted by Janemba. So, uh, number six, I think, five, again, five and six can be interchangeable here. Let's move on to number five. Okay, number five, we have LF17. Uh, LF17 is still holding on. I mean, he's still obviously very, very strong. He has a very strong kit that's going to age very well. Again, this character will probably just outage most of this list. And I've been saying that for nine months now. 
Um, this is not a good meta for Android 17. And the reason why is because this meta is probably the fastest meta we've ever seen. This character, his value continues to go up and up and up the longer the fights are. The healing he does whenever the enemy uses a blue card, the debuffing, the double vanish value he's getting, the ability to stall the fights out, um, the card draw speed he's collecting whenever he uses a blast. Like there's a so many there's so many aspects of this character that just scale with length of time in the fight. This is the fastest meta ever. It's up there. It's it's is, it, is this actually the fastest meta ever? The fastest meta ever might have been Cooler's meta because Cooler touched you once and you the game was over. This might be the second fastest meta ever. <laughs> I don't know. It's up there. It's one of the fastest metas of all time. Um, and because of that, this guy is not really able to take advantage of his gauge to the most of uh, his, or to, as well as he used to, right? I've had plenty of matches fighting androids where we, li like, I literally killed his entire team before 17's gauge even activated. And 17 himself, don't even, don't even get me started on how much damage 17 himself takes from Janemba. Janemba literally t hits him three times and he's dead. <laughs> three hits is all it takes for Janemba to kill him. So Janemba can actually kill, kill this guy, like, in in the in the uh, length of time where his cover null is still active so it's uh, pretty rough for uh, 17 i think one of the other things about this guy is that uh, again the the android team that we've ran up until this point has been 17 cell and the gammas i've seen a lot of people drop 17 off from the team to bring magenta i've seen a lot of people drop cell to bring magenta so magenta has seen a lot more play on androids um, I don't know if I'd go that far, but people are definitely starting to notice that 17, he's not really fit to be the greatest in this meta, but I still think his heal and power down whenever the enemy uses an ultimate or a blue card, like that in combination with someone like Orange Piglo, for example, like you can really put a stop to Janemba that way, right? There are certain combinations of teams where it's like hyper focused on just dealing with Janemba and that's it. The problem with those team builds is that like they get stomped by like other generic teams like Goku and Frieza, Vegito Blue teams just kill that team really easily, right? So that's the downside there. But I think this is just not a good meta for 17. Obviously, the meta will change in the future, and Geneva won't be the best character in the game. Probably we'll see. I don't know if this is going to be a, I don't know if this is going to be a 17 and 18 situation here. But um, 17, of course, it will be good for a long time to come still. So. Uh, this is 17, number five. Let's move on to number four. All right, coming in at number four, we have LF Tag, Goku and Frieza. This character, of course, still one of the single greatest characters of all time in terms of just their individual kit and performance. Um, the problem with this character right now is number one, like historically, they've been a very tough to kill character. They go type neutral against blue cards and ultimates, even though they have two colors for some reason. Uh, they get their vanish back in various different ways. They have uh, ri ridiculously strong green cards. Their blue cards hit ridiculously hard. Uh, the amount of card draw speed they get is stupid. Like there's a million things you can just, you know, shoot off on the laundry list to make this character sound ridiculous. Um, now they can't tank. I mean, it's just, it's just they get curb stomped by Janemba. Janemba just enters the battlefield, hits them twice and they, they die, <laughs> right? Or three times or whatever it is, right? So a lot of times up until this point, we've seen um, this character perform really well because of their rising rush gauge, of course. That's the main draw of this character, the main allure of this character. Um, we don't need the rising rush really as much anymore. Janemba just comes in and just sort of kills people by himself without needing the rising rush. His ultimate comes in and one shots people without needing the rising rush. Uh, this character gets hit by Janemba's ult and it's, it's, it's over. Right? I mean, they, they just die, right? Um, Janemba, the ability to use two ults to, on top of that, the extreme bleed tricking or trickling their health down, you know, over the course of the fight. Uh, again, I mentioned the same thing with Namek Goku with this character. This character, one of the major strengths that this character received as part of their buff is the ridiculous buff to Goku's green card. And that, I think, is one of the main aspects that has allowed them to look as impressive as they have been since they got buffed. Guess what they can't do now? They can't chain the green card into a million billion cards because Janemba just counters that, right? I mean, we're talking about an era where characters now no longer care about Covernal, right? Janemba comes in, Goku and Frieza are notorious for how much Covernal they're able to obtain throughout their combos, and Janemba just doesn't care. Janemba just counters the, their Covernal, and then guess what he does? He just smacks them with a 3 million damage ult, right? He can't really do much to that. It's just... It's just a it's, a, it's a different era. We're, we're moving into a different era in this game. Goku and Freeze are going to be around for a very, very, very long time to come, if not just for their unique age, but they're not 
the god of the game that they were prior to Janemba's release. Janemba is just, he's ushering in a new age of power creep. And I, I feel like I'm pretty comfortable with this character being at number four on the list. I think on top of that as well, like where are you running this character? You can run them on like universe reps with 17 and stuff like that. Uh, you can throw them on Fusion Warriors with VB and Gogeta Blue, potentially. You can throw them on Regen. Hell, you can throw them with Janemba. You can run them with Janemba, I guess, right? Um, so there's definitely ways that you can uh, make use of this character still. Of course, they're a really flexible unit leader slot. They're still able to do really well against characters that aren't named Super Janemba. But um, Janemba's presence, I think, has definitely exposed uh, the f very few amount of flaws that this character has. Honestly, it's not even just flaws. It's just power creep. Like, actually, this Janemba has ushered in power creep. It's true. So uh, Goku and Freeze at number four. Uh, this character will be around for a while. They'll age really well. One of the best gauges in the game, if not the single best gauge in the game. So. Let's move on to number three, top three. So number three in the list is going to be Tag, Gamma, one and two. Uh, this is one of like the very, very, very few characters, if not like the only character in the game that can sort of sneak around Janemba's gauge. I mean, there's certainly gonna be instances where they just can't help it and they have to use a blue or a strike or whatever on Janemba. Again, a lot of people starting to use Magenta on Androids to sort of uh, anticipate that and work around it. Uh, the goal with this character, of course, is to get to the core breaker mode. And the core breaker mode really is that mechanic. Like it is, it is utterly absurd. Uh, if you get to the core breaker mode on this character, there's a good chance you can just straight up win, right? Even against a character like Janemba, like Janemba can't defend against the core breaker. The core breaker hits Janemba and he's dead. Uh, the core breaker hits Cell and he's dead. The core breaker hits Orange Piccolo and he takes so much damage from it that your entire team gets to like one health. <laughs> the core breaker is really, I think, one of the reasons why I have this character so high up on the list. Uh, the problem with that is that in order to get to the core breaker, you have to be able to chain together combos. And again, as we've been talking about this entire video so far, it's very, very hard to do that when you have a character that does not care about cover null and basically just counters cover null, right? Anti, anti special cover change nullification. Nullific special cover change nullification nullification is what this Janemba's gauge is. And again, it's not only that, you just smack them with an ultimate. That's on top of that as well. Um, but the Gammas, I think, again, the Gammas cannot tank Janemba. Nobody in the game can tank Janemba. It's impossible. But against other characters that are not Janemba, for example, you're running Cell next to Janemba most of the time. They're, this, this character is a really good char character to use against Purple Cell. Um, they can build up their gauge defensively as well. Remember, they don't only build up their tag, uh, their, uh, tag switch gauge by attacking. They can also build it up by getting hit. They can build it up by uh, using green cards, by missing cards as well. Like if you're in close melee range, they can miss with their blue card and just look at the gauge built up. They're killing Dragon Balls. Uh, they're reducing key. They're getting their Vanish back when an ally is defeated with their green card. So, I mean, these guys have a lot of tech to be able to do things really, really well. Um, and on top of that, they do so much damage with their blast cards that if you have a hand where you have like two or three blasts in a row, you can really pressure Janemba into switching before uh, having to go for a strike in a lot of instances. Even on the receiving end, I've been on the receiving end of like 10, 13, 10 11, 12, 13 star gammas, if not just 14 star gammas, that have pressured my Janemba into switching. Because remember, one of Janemba's special abilities is the fact that he, he reduces ally sub count by 10, and he heals the, the whole team, and he removes enemy buffs when they use a rising rush. So a lot of times what will happen is the gammas will be doing so much damage with their blast cards to Janemba that I can't really bank on them going for a strike. So I have to switch. And then when I switch, they just rush or they just are able to continuously, you know, then use strikes and build, build up the tag gauge even more. So I feel like this character actually is, is aging pretty well. They're also supporting uh, a lot of intangibles this character is able to do. The core breaker is like uh, golden ability right now in this game. So I have the gammas at number three. I feel like it's a pretty safe spot for them. Let's move on to number two. All right, next we have Purple Cell. I mean, this guy really dropped at an ideal time for himself. We have like, androids at one of the best spots they've ever been in when, he, when this guy released now we have regen probably like just the single best team in the game though no, not probably it is i mean regen's the best team in the game it's not even close uh where this guy makes the core cut of the team i think the core that i use is orange pickle of this guy and then of course janemba um this guy of course covers janemba's weakness to green characters which i don't even think matters right now because there's no good greens i mean i actually i've I do fight a lot of Orange Piccolos now. Like Orange Piccolo is one of the most common characters I fight because <laughs> you need to use him. <laughs> um, you don't need this cell to like cover for Janemba against Orange Piccolo because Janemba can just tear through him on his own. But this guy definitely helps. Uh, we do run into the occasional uh, Ultra Rosé and I just find it hilarious where like <laughs> the cell literally does like two thirds of Rosé's HP in one attack. Like a, like a, just a normal blast is like half his HP. <laughs> ridiculous 
Um, this guy is just ridiculous. I mean, again, he fits on like two of the best teams in the game, Androids and Regem. His AoE green card is so ridiculous for the team because it allows him to fill his hand up a lot of the times and then get cover null. And then you can chain that into Janemba having cover null and drawing a card and then continuing the combo and then using his ult and then rising rushing. And it's just like, it just gets ridiculous. And then on top of that, of course, he has his death AoE, which once you get to like the latter half of the fight, if that goes off in a situation where you have Janemba's gauge up and you have his ultimate still, um, and you have like Orange Piccolo alive as well, like things can quickly, like if you're getting beaten up, things can quickly turn around from the AoE. Uh, again, a lot of Orange Piccolo's flying around. I've actually had an instance where Orange Piccolo, the uh, transformed version, ended up killing the cell. And uh, I just laughed as his entire team went to one HP. Like, he, his whole team basically went from full to one <laughs> from the death away from the cell. Uh, yeah, this guy's just really, really dumb. Uh, the Vanish Restoration, the main ability giving the, the blue card that has a chance to faint. Like, if you faint with this guy's blue card, you win the, you win the game pr pretty much. Like, you land this guy's blue card, you faint the opponent, and then you just go into Janemba and ult, and, like, the enemy actually can't survive? Like, who survives that? <laughs> oh, basically nobody. Uh, and, yeah, I feel like his defense is actually not too bad. He has a really, really good uh, environment in terms of Zenkai buffs that are available to him. He, of course, on regen, they actually gave 21, purple 21, a Zenkai. So this guy obviously gets the HP buff Z ability plus the Zenkai ability from that character on the bench. And of course, on uh, Androids, he still has that in addition to the uh, like the, the, the purple 17 can double Zenkai buff him, the uh, one that recently got a Zenkai. So this character is uh, probably looking pretty good for the future as well, because I mean, they just for whatever reason refuse to give us good green characters. So we're, we're way overdue for like a monster green drop. And when we get a good green, this guy is uh, going to continue to be high up on these lists. So. Purple Salt number two. Let's move on to number one. All right, number one is Ultra Janemba. I'm sure everybody's very shocked by this. <laughs> uh, and I don't think it's close. I think there's a pretty sizable gap between this character and the rest of the game. I don't really know what they were thinking with this guy. You know, the, the, the most, I guess, similar release to this character that I can think of, at least in terms of how he plays and his, his play style, it's Namagoku. Blue OG transforming Namagoku. Because what this Janemba does and his biggest asset, of, of course, it's honestly, I would even say it's probably bigger than his gauge is the fact that he switches in and you actually can't do anything like he switches in and he just controls the battlefield instantaneously. He, he enters the battlefield and you are powerless. You can't do anything, right? I think the biggest mistake on this, you, you guys want to know what I think is the biggest mistake on this character? It's this blast armor. Why does this have blast armor? He counters strikes and he counters blasts. He counters blasts via this card, the strike card. If you have a strike card with Janemba, and this is actually a dynamic that I've been talking about with characters like Orange Piccolo and also Yellow Jiren has it as well, is Orange Piccolo and Yellow Jiren have blast armor on their strike cards, but they also have a counter green card. So if you have a counter, if you have a green card with uh, Jiren transformed or Orange Piccolo transformed, and you're in mid range, you basically can counter every single action the opponent can do, bar a, a beam blue card, right? You can counter tackles and strike cards with your green card, and you can counter blast cards with your with your um, with your strike because it is blast armor. Janemba takes it to a new level where Janemba doesn't even have to press a card to counter strikes. Janemba just stands there and eats it. If the opponent wants to go for a blast, Janemba can just go for the strike, right? And if the opponent tackles, guess what you do with Janemba? Nothing. <laughs> you just eat it. And then the opponent can't do anything either. And if the opponent tackles you, you eat the tackle and then they go for a blast. You just blast them through it. And then on the sidestep, you can catch them with the, with the gauge. Like, it's just, it's ridiculous. And not only do you catch them with the gauge, you follow the gauge up with a raw ult that does supreme damage and inflicts the entire enemy team with, um, <laughs> inflicts the entire enemy team with extreme bleed. Right. And then uh, obviously nullifies endurance. So, I mean, this I, I'm not going to go into massive detail about this character, what this character is able to do, because I pretty much talked about this character throughout the entire video and went over how he interacts with all these characters. He is a unit that does not care about cover nullification. He's able to still counter you. He is a character that in a lot of instances is able to just straight up kill the best characters in the game with like three or four cards like Goku and Frieza, like the Gammas, like 
purple cell um i still fight on the occasion like ultra gogeta blue this janemba like literally just kills him before his gauge can even activate so a lot of these characters that thrive on the game and meta lasting for a long time like you know 100 plus counts that's just that doesn't exist anymore because you get this janemba counter off and your opponent either has a green character that can eat it you know eat it well quote unquote which is at least half of their hp remaining after the ultimate is done which is basically how every green character eats this like i, I have not fought i've i've fought basically full 14 star zenkai buff the full z plus equip green characters that we have in the game right now which are not a lot like rose orange piccolo revival ui goku um i have not fought that, fought that many 23rd world tournament gokus but i feel like it would be kind of similar for him Right, a lot of people's strategies is to proc the gauge early and then just switch into the green character so that they can eat the ultimate. That's fine, but they still take half their HP. <laughs> it's not, it's not like you're. Oh my God, yes, we got the yeah, we, we got the gauge and the ultimate out of the way early. Like you're still at half HP and then your entire team has extreme bleed. Like, it's not, it's not like you're you're, you're at an, you're at an, it's not like you're at an advantage from doing that. Um. The cover nullification on this character, the fact that he draws a card, which means that his combos are going to go on for a long time. The fact that he's stacking his damage every time he uses a card by 20%. 20% is a lot. And then to top it all off, he can't really be rushed because he has this effect down here, which is unlimited times, right? So they made it so that the uh, team heal and the buff canceling activate once, but they made the ally shortening sub count by the uh, shortened ally sub count by 10 effect unlimited times. So he's very hard to be rushed unless you're like locking him in with no switching or something like that um melee based green cards melee based blue cards strike cards blast cards none of it works against this character and then he and then he turns around and he touches you and you you die right his strike card does like two million damage <laughs> so i i don't know again this this is a character that feels similar to me um to Namek Goku, the original Namek Goku, where Namek Goku, like, switch, some, the, the opponent switches into Namek Goku, and what do you do? You know, it's, it's a similar dynamic to Ultra Vegito Blue with his green card. If Ultra Vegito Blue has a green card, like, there's not much you could do about it. Your best bet is pretty much just to, like, either float up and go for an attack, or quick dash and go for an attack, and hope he doesn't react in time to it. But it's even a different level with this Shinemba, because not only is Shinemba gonna hit you with an ultimate afterwards but janemba doesn't have like the, the janemba player doesn't have to even touch anything like it's just automatic it procs by itself <laughs> so uh we'll see what they want to do moving forward here i think a big part of why this character is so oppressive right now is again just the fact that they have refused for seven months since the release of ultra rose to give us a good green character orange piccolo is fine he is not anywhere close to as good as he should have been it's true. I mean, I don't even know if it would have been good if he was a lot better just because then regen would be even more ridiculous. And I already think regen is the best team in the game, but we need a good green and we do. I mean, it's it's time. We, we, we've been waiting for a good green for seven months and it's just they, they just keep giving us purple and blue characters that are just going to continue to get pummeled by this character and have no defensible uh, way of dealing with them. So there we go. That's the list here. Just to quickly recap the list. Uh, let me pull it up here. Uh, honorable mentions, we have LF Path to Power Kid Goku, Ultra Rose Goku Black, Ultra Hit, Magenta, Revival UI Goku, and then Blue Zamasu. Should I even have Blue Zamasu on that? Maybe I should replace Blue Zamasu with Green 23rd World Tournament Goku. The reason why I didn't put him on there is just because I haven't fought him a single time. <laughs> I don't. I, I would assume he would perform okay against Janemba. He's still not going to be able to tank him, but... He'd probably do better than Blue Zamasu would, yeah. I should probably have him on there instead of uh, Blue Zamasu, whatever. All right, so number 10, we have uh, Revival Captain Ginyu. Number 9, we have LF Orange Piccolo. Number 8, we have Ultra Kid Boo. Number 7, we have Ultra Vegito Blue. Number 6, we have LF Blue Super Saiyan Namek Goku. Number 5, we have LF Android 17. Number 4, we have Tag Goku and Frieza. Number 3, we have Tag Gamma 1 and 2. Number 2, we have Purple LF Cell. And then number 1, we have uh, Ultra Super Janemba by a very, very wide margin. So let me know down below what you guys think. Do you disagree with spots on this list? If so, let me know which and why. Hope you guys enjoyed this again, and I'll see you all in the next one.